Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at Ilo Pathology. This is part 8 of the inflammation series which I had started long back, you know, in the first 7 uh, parts that is part 1 to part 7. Uh, i have discussed various aspects of acute inflammation right from you know the events the cellular events the vascular events the chemical mediators the morphology and the outcomes of acute inflammation everything has been discussed in detail you can watch those videos you know i mean that would make sense to understand the topic which i am going to talk about uh, today the topic which i am going to discuss today is chronic inflammation okay some basics of chronic inflammation as to what are the causes of chronic inflammation the morphology and some cells involved in chronic inflammation so the overview would be you will be uh, knowing about the definition of chronic inflammation the different causes or settings where chronic inflammation can occur some morphological aspects of chronic inflammation and role of lymphocytes and other cells in chronic inflammation okay i'll be discussing mainly about the lymphocytes because i had already talked about uh, the role of macrophages in chronic inflammation and the role of macrophages in the granuloma formation in another video the link to watch uh, the role of macrophages video you know will be put in the description below you can watch it later now what is chronic inflammation chronic inflammation is basically a response of prolonged duration you know in contrast to acute inflammation where the response is of immediate duration within days in this case the response is of prolonged duration it ranges from weeks to months okay where there will be inflammation there will be tissue injury and there will be attempts at repair all these three things coexist in varying combinations okay in some cases inflammation may be predominant in some cases injury may be, may be predominant or in some cases it will be at the stage of repair so it may or may not follow acute inflammation okay in the last uh, tutorial i had talked about the outcomes of acute inflammation right in that one of the outcome would be acute inflammation might progress to chronic inflammation okay but it is not always so chronic inflammation may or may not follow acute inflammation and at this point of time you need to understand that inflammation and infection they are not synonymous terms okay so chronic inflammation is not synonymous with chronic infections now what are all the causes of chronic inflammation i mean what are all the settings where chronic inflammation can be observed one it can be in the setting of a persistent infection two it can be you know due to hypersensitivity diseases and three could be because of prolonged exposure to toxic agents so when i say persistent infection it means to say that an infection which is caused by the organism which are difficult to eradicate okay so that invariably progresses to chronic inflammation when we talk about hypersensitivity diseases it means that there is inappropriate activation of the immune system right, which can be excessive so whenever the immune system is activated excessively and inappropriately that might result in the setting of chronic inflammation for example autoimmune diseases where you have an immune response mounted by our own immune cells on our own tissues okay that is autoimmune diseases secondly if there is unregulated immune response particularly against some microbes okay you can expect chronic inflammatory diseases the most common example for that is inflammatory bowel disease now exposure to toxic agents it can be exogenous agents or endogenous agents one common example of exogenous agent is silica okay silica is a dust particle which is ubiquitously found okay prolonged exposure to such silica results in a condition called silicosis which is an occupational lung disease it's also called pneumoconiosis okay there are so many other conditions this is just an example where prolonged exposure to toxic agent by exogenous material can result in chronic inflammation similarly one example which we can think of in endogenous is cholesterol see cholesterol being a product of your normal fat metabolism so anything which is in excess even if it is normal can result in injury to the particular cell so when i when when i discussed about the cell injury okay i talked about uh, you know uh, cell injury by constituents of normal cell metabolism okay one such example is the cholesterol anything excess even if it is normal constituent that can lead to cell injury similarly the cholesterol when it is in excess it can result in atherosclerosis in which inflammation can also be a predominant feature now what are all the morphological features of chronic inflammation okay so let us understand what we learned in acute inflammation so we thought we learned that acute inflammation you find vascular changes 
and because of increased vascular permeability you find lots of edema and then the most common cells which you found in a, which you find in acute inflammation is neutrophils right so in chronic inflammation as per the definition we learned that it is inflammation tissue injury and attempts at repair they can exist in varying components so morphologically also all these things can be observed one what is this inflammation so inflammation means infiltration by the mononuclear cells in contrast to neutrophils in acute inflammation in chronic inflammation the cells involved are the macrophages the lymphocytes okay b and t lymphocytes it can be plasma cells the mast cells and certainly to a certain extent they can be eosinophils now if the injurious agent is persistent okay then that can result in tissue injury because you know that inflammation is a double edged sword right and at the same time you know the damaged tissue can be replaced by connective tissue for the support of the damaged tissue okay for example if there is lots of proliferation of blood vessels then it is called angiogenesis and if it is replaced by fibrous proliferation it is called fibrosis so any chronic inflammatory process you can find these three things now let us understand the role of various cells as i told you the role of macrophages i am not going to discuss in this particular video we will concentrate on role of lymphocytes okay you know that lymphocytes there are b cells and t cells right the b cells are the ones which are produced in the bone marrow t cells are also produced in bone marrow but they are immature t cells they leave the bone marrow and then they mature in the thymus let us see how they mature in the thymus now that's a bone marrow where you find common lymphoid progenitor cells in the bone marrow okay the immature t cells are released outside of these bone marrow and they circulate in the peripheral stream as immature precursor t cells and you know that in the early part of your life you have thymus and that thymus these immature precursor cells goes and then they now are referred to as thymocytes it is these thymocytes which mature to become mature or peripheral t cells okay there is also a process called selection we will not talk about in detail about selection selection basically means you know all those cells which are unwanted are destroyed only those cells which are needed for our body are retained okay that's positive and negative selection okay now after uh, process of selection and maturation you i mean there are lots of receptors gets expressed on to these thymocytes okay one if it is cd4 uh, receptor it is called cd4 positive t cell another one is cd8 positive t cell so after maturation these cells enter the peripheral pool and now they are referred to as peripheral t cells which can be cd4 positive cells and cd8 positive cells now these peripheral t cells or even the b cells they have to be activated right for it to be be functional they have to be activated when are they activated they are activated by the microbes and other environmental antigens so once these are activated okay either t or b cells they amplify the inflammation and they propagate inflammation and that is when the inflammation becomes persistent and severe another important thing we need to remember is that this process also leads to generation of long lived memory cells these are the cells which also help in a process called granulomatous inflammation which i have discussed in detail in another video so what type of lymphocytes have a role in inflammation it is the cd4 positive i told you there are two types right cd4 and cd8 positive cd4 positive the lymphocytes and b cells have a role in inflammation now first we'll talk about cd4 positive t cells or they are also called as t helper cells now there are three different types of t helper cells one th1 cell th2 cell and th17 cell are t helper 17 t helper 1 and t helper 2 now this t helper 1 cell they secrete cytokine interferon gamma and this interferon gamma is the one which activates the macrophages via the classical pathway if you have watched that video of macrophage activation it is these macrophages which are activated by classical pathway they are pro inflammatory in nature okay now what does t helper 2 cells do they secrete interleukin 4 interleukin 5 and interleukin 13 which activates a macrophage in an alternate path so macrophages activated via alternate pathway they are anti inflammatory in nature that i have discussed in detail in the video of macrophage activation okay they also activate the t helper 2 cells which secrete said these interleukins they also activate eosinophils the t helper 17 cells they secrete interleukin 17 which helps in recruiting neutrophils and monocytes okay even though it is a chronic inflammation okay where we talked mostly of mononuclear cells remember there is t helper 17 cells which secrete interleukin 17 which helps in recruitment of neutrophils so neutrophils can also be seen in chronic inflammation we'll talk about it a bit later 
so basically these cd4 positive t cells they promote inflammation and influence the nature of inflammatory reaction what does b cells do these b cells which are activated they progress to form plasma cells and these plasma cells produce antibodies now in chronic inflammatory conditions you find lots of antibodies but then we do not know the role of these antibodies at okay in chronic inflammation all the above cells the t cells the b cells the plasma cells you know they all come together or they cluster together to form lymphoid follicles at the sites of chronic inflammation so they are called tertiary lymphoid organs recollect when we talk about hashimoto's thyroiditis you find lots of lymphoid follicles in the stroma of the thyroid okay in case of chronic pyelonephritis which is a condition where there is chronic inflammation of tubules and interstitium of kidney you find lots of lymphoid follicles so these are basically aggregates of all these chronic inflammatory cells these are nothing but the tertiary lymphoid organs but again the significance of these is not really well established after knowing the role of uh, lymphocytes now what are the other cells which are uh, you know found in chronic inflammation these are eosinophils yes eosinophils they are abundant in immune reactions which is mediated by ige and they are also play a major role in parasitic infections you know these eosinophils contain lots of these granules and these granules contain major basic protein which is a highly cationic protein which is toxic to helminths that's how they are found most often in in parasitic infections not just being toxic to helminths it is also toxic to the host epithelial cells and that's how it can damage the host epithelial cells as i've been telling you inflammation is a double edged sword so it not only damages the invading agent it also damages the underlying tissue so the next important cell is the mast cell so mast cells are widely distributed in connective tissue you know that it participate in both acute and chronic inflammation we discussed about mast cells in acute inflammation right how they are the ones which secrete histamine and prostaglandins right the granules of mast cells secrete histamine and prostaglandins which play a major role in chemical and uh, as a chemical mediator in acute inflammation right now how does it play a role in chronic inflammation they also secrete i mean the mast cells they also secrete lots of cytokines which aid in chronic inflammation and lastly we talk about neutrophils as i told you neutrophils is not just found in acute inflammation alone they are also found in chronic inflammation because whenever there is persistence of microbes whenever the microbes are not able to be eradicated then you find neutrophils still active there and as you of as you have already studied that neutrophils are also produced by these mediators produced by activated macrophages or t lymphocytes right now for example in the cases of chronic osteomyelitis though it is a chronic entity you find lots of neutrophils or a collection of neutrophils in the form of pus in chronic osteomyelitis the term acute on chronic inflammation is also used when you when, when you find you know acute in inflammation in a pre existent chronic inflammation you use the word acute on chronic inflammation so these are the various cells involved are found in chronic inflammation so in today's tutorial we discussed about the definition of chronic inflammation we talked about the some of the scenarios where chronic inflammation is encountered some morphological aspects and then in detail about the role of lymphocytes and other cells in chronic inflammation thank you thanks for watching if you have liked this video don't forget to hit the like button and i request you to post comments if you have any questions you know to ask please post it i am ready to answer those questions i'll be coming out with more videos do subscribe and don't forget to share if you find this is useful thank you